Hi, I'm Atul and I'm in London right now. I'm an online tutor who teaches maths and science to secondary school students. Hi, I'm Paul. I'm in Burnley, Lancashire right now and I'm an online A-level chemistry tutor. Great. In this video, Paul will be giving me a, an actual demonstration of an online chemistry lesson. But before that, we'll be talking about why online tutoring is uh, so much better for the students' perspective. Uh, both me and Paul are 100% online tutors and we decided to teach exclusively online because it had a number of benefits, including benefits for the students themselves, as in the learning for them is much better, is more efficient and they prefer it. So um, yeah, I mean, what do you think are your, your top reasons for students to prefer online tutoring? Well, I know that students prefer online tutoring because when I move from face to face to online, I offered my students the option of either face to face online. So I do a demonstration of online tuition with them either in their home or me in my home, them in their home. And every time I've done the demonstration of online tuition, they've said they've preferred it. Uh, I even did one once where the student and the parent were both against online tuition when I suggested it. Uh, but then came uh, where they were going on a holiday, so they had to move the time. And I said I could only do that time uh, if it was online. Um, uh, but then we could go back to face to face after the holiday. So I tutored them online. I went back to their home after the holiday and they said actually we prefer the online. Um, and then, then that, for me, suggested that all my tuition could be online because students prefer it. And it's probably different reasons for different students. Some might just feel more comfortable uh, on a computer than a tutor actually sat next to them. You know, they might like the online whiteboard environment. The um, parents just might not like a tutor interfering with their home situation. There, there could be a lot of situations reasons behind it but I just know that whenever I've tried it with a student they've taken the online option and the parents have. Um, one of the reasons might be because of the excellent resources that are available online so whatever chemistry topic they need help with is there in an instant you know I'm not rushing through my briefcase trying to find something on that topic. There's some excellent resources I've got on my computer or available on the internet if I haven't got them directly on my computer. Yeah, that's a great point and I'll just pick up on these two points and give my perspective as well. Uh, the the, uh, the thing we're using to teach this one here thing called bit paper, uh, that alone uh, is a, a creative canvas in which uh, it's, it's not possible in person. It's simply, simply not possible to turn up um, and put five bits of information from five different books onto this one creative whiteboard, which is exactly what that student might need. It actually might need five different bits of information from five different places on that one whiteboard or one, one space. And if you imagine turning up with the five books, you'll have to like flick around the books and uh, go from one book to another book. It's, uh, and I've done that in the past and it's extremely inefficient. Whereas a student needs that information in the right place, moved in the right place of the whiteboard to interact with it and it's customized exactly to that student and um, in that way the information travels from me to the student in an extremely efficient and organized manner and vice versa as well and yeah and the main point I would say is just is it's uh, it's the ultimate relaxed environment I'm in my my home in my space and they're in their home in their own space and there's no physical person present right next to them watching over exactly what everything they write or you know there's, there's a bunch of like social protocols and social pressure that's involved when two people are meeting together especially in that one-on-one -on -one tutoring environment it's uh, it's quite an intense environment in some ways and by making this by creating this distance paradoxically I found uh, when I was turning students to go into online tutoring. I was teaching them one day in person and the other day of the week online and I found, simply found they were just talking more, they were just articulating more because they had to, they had to like 
think about what they were doing and then tell me that what's what's on their mind and I couldn't get that information out of them in person I was oh, I can't believe it or not and online I was finding that I was getting that invaluable information on exactly the point where they were stuck at and by them thinking about what they are actually doing and articulating that that enriched the learning process for them as well so you know this these two benefits alone were enough for me to be completely convinced that I cannot, I simply cannot teach in person anymore and uh, I have to move all my students online and that was about four years ago and I've, I've tutored online ever since. Great, so um, I look forward to um, what you're about to show me then. Uh, so let's move on to the demonstration itself. Okay, so today we're going to look at um, equilibrium constant problem KP where we're going to use a bit of algebra. Um, so you'll see as we go into it. So as ever with uh, equilibrium constants, we're going to use the ICE method. So what we've got initially, what we've got changing, and what we've got left at equilibrium. So we know initially we've got 0 0.5 moles of A, 0 0.5 moles of B. And then, when well, usually we haven't been informed what's changed or what we've got left at equilibrium. Uh, it's worth putting in there, we've got nothing of C at the start. So what we're going to have to use here is that we're going to have to use algebra. We're going to have to use, say that x moles of um, let's say C has been formed mm. or perhaps better to say because it's 2C 2X of C has been formed and therefore the change in C must have been 2X and what would the changes in A and B be? So that's, well, half of 2x, which will be x. Excellent. So what's left of a would be our initial take away our change. So that would be a half take x. And the same for b, a half take x. And then, because this is KP, what we do next is the mole fraction, which is the number of moles divided by the total number of moles at equilibrium. So there, what would our total number of moles at equilibrium be if we added that row of equilibrium moles? Up? Yeah, so that's uh, all of it just added up to this plus this plus that. That's it. Um, I can do that just roughly in my head, minus x minus x plus 2x will be no more x's, 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 kicks you to 1. Excellent, so we can write down our total number of moles at equilibrium is 1. And therefore our mole fraction for a would be a half take x over 1 which is as a half take x, same for b. And for c, 2x over 1, which is just 2x. And therefore, um, partial pressure of a, b, and c's mole fraction times total pressure. And it hasn't given us total pressure, but it's just called it p. So a mole fraction our partial pressure for A is mole fraction times the total pressure P exactly the same for B and 
one four C so now we know our partial pressures so now we can put those into our equation for KP so KP is products over reactants raised to their powers or partial pressures are products over reactants raised to their powers so for But we can write it out. So it's the partial pressure of C squared over the partial pressure of A times the partial pressure of B. So that would be 2x all squared or 2x times P all squared you see I just edit that out kind of here yeah. and on the bottom we've got half minus x times p all squared So what do you notice about that equation? Well, they both have a square and yeah, my first guess is there's a p square eventually here and the p squared and the denominator. So there's a p square in the numerator and denominator, which would uh, cancel them out due to equivalent fractions. That's that's exactly it. That's why they haven't given us a total pressure, because the pressures p squared on top cancels with the p squared on the bottom. Hmm. And then uh, <clears throat> on the top you'll end up with 4x squared and you'll end up with a quadratic on the bottom, surely. Uh, it says... So that's 4x. Uh, I can have a go at it. So I'll just mm -hmm. 4 x square 0 0.25 minus x plus x square. Or I can say uh, before we get we don't if you notice it says we don't need to use a quadratic equation yeah so what's another way of doing this that mm. is possible but it's a long-winded way yeah yeah so at this stage KP is equal to 2.55 Ah, of course, okay, yeah. So is there anything we can do here without yeah. ending the brackets? Yeah, of course, yeah, no, I, yeah, I didn't pay attention to that one. Went for the heavy-handed maths approach. Um, oh yeah, probably the easier way is just to square root both sides, so you would uh, square root all of this, and then you square root that as well. Okay, so could you do that? Yeah, let's... Uh, uh, I do a square root of 2.55, 1.597 for now. 97, which we can round later on, equals 2x over 0 0.5 minus x. And now, do you think somehow you could work out x? Yeah, so that's really a linear equation rather than a quadratic equation as such. So I'll proceed and solve that. 
Um, so multiply both sides by 0 0.5 minus x. So, um, that takes me to 0 0.5. x equals 2x, which I can proceed to solve uh, as a linear equation, add that, so 1.597 plus 2, 3.597x equals 0. 7984 giving x equals 0 0.22 oh yeah that's 222 two, two surrounding 2 we got two significant figures I think so let's just call that 0.22. Excellent. So now we know x. Can we calculate the number of moles of each species at equilibrium? Yeah. So at equilibrium, it's simply given by these expressions. So I'll just write that out here again. At equilibrium. This one is 0 0.5 minus 0 0.22. In fact, I'll just explicitly write that out. This one is also 0 0.5 minus 0 0.22. That's just 2 times 0 0.22. Uh, 0 0.28, 0 0.28, and this is 0 0.44, and that's A, B, and C, just to be clear again. Excellent, and that's the number of moles of A, B, and C at equilibrium. Brilliant. So oh, that's the final answer. That is the final answer. Great. That's a very useful way to do it. Yeah, I look forward to the next set of calculations and uh, problems. Okay, thank you. Great, thanks. Bye.